morning, everybody. Uh, so the sound is working. I've brought my helmet, my camera. Uh, this is in English. If you didn't know, you can still leave. And uh, there are colleagues, and I will tell again at the end, at our stand uh, towards uh, next to the, uh, the main conference room, if you want to speak in German, uh, listen in German, or anything I said you didn't understand, my German colleagues are there to help you out, and they're uh, very welcoming you to, uh, to come there. So uh, as said in the introduction, I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about how we are making time machines for the construction industry. It's a bit of a, a big term, but I wanted to put it a little bit into perspective today and uh, take you through a little bit of trends that are going on. It's, it's a couple of minutes, and then we go into the, the really cool stuff, uh, the, tec the technology, and I will explain to you how it works. So as a company, we are responding to a lot of global trends. Yeah, there's a lot of information coming towards you. Uh, you will walk around here today, and you see a lot of things around technology, uh, artificial intelligence, or KI. Um, they are, there's a lot of shortage in staff everywhere, uh, including here in Germany and the surrounding countries. So we have to do more with less people, right? Uh, we want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, also, you will see all around here uh, the role that BIM is playing, but also people are struggling a little bit about how to get BIM to the job site or to people in the field, or basically how do you get BIM to the non-BIM people. I will explain a little bit about that as well today. And also, um, uh, one of the bigger trends that you see is integrations. There's a lot of different technologies, but how do you all knit them together and make them work? Um, why did we create open space and some of the bigger challenges uh, I wanted to highlight before we dive into what it is, what it looks like, what it can do. And it was also uh, explained by Paula in the introduction. You know, documenting a job site or, or a, a Bausteller is complicated. Yeah? A lot of people go out there with their smartphone or, or a normal camera. They make hundreds, if not thousands, of photos. They have a, a, a notice book. Yeah, uh, they make some notes, they go back to the office, they have to send the photos to the relevant people, start communicating. It's a bit messy. It's doable, it's messy. It takes a lot of time and it creates a lot of confusion. So, on top of that, the only real way so far to find out what's going on on a job site is to actually go there, right? We're in Hamburg here, if your office is here, uh, how do you check what's going on in Munich? or even in Africa, or in Asia, if you're building a data center, for example. Yeah? It's a challenge, and it costs a lot of time and effort. And that, that's a couple of things we don't have when we work in construction, right? Uh, on top of that, I already mentioned this a little bit before, how do you coordinate the project, your work, what you're doing with different teams all around your company, with external stakeholders, the people that you work with, with your client, uh, within your company, outside of your company, and even around the world. Um, you probably all know, uh, coming from this country, what this is. Uh, there's always issues around projects. That's fine. But it's how you deal with these in a timely manner in order for you to make sure they don't become bigger or they get solved uh, in the right time, by the right people, etc., etc. And we've made that very easy for you, and I will show you. And normally, I'm ending my presentation with this slide, but I thought, well, why don't I start with the conclusion? So before I even show you, this is what our customers around the world, uh, and we have hundreds of thousands of users around the world every single day using our technology. Uh, this is what our customers are finding. Yeah? They are able to document their job site, their, their, their projects, much, much faster, almost 95% faster than today. Also, reducing site travel. It's not only reducing time and the effort that people are going out there to go on a job site, but also if you talk about sustainability, you don't have to get into a car or into a plane, you know, and get out there. Uh, and also, if you look at the last example I gave you, uh, it's preventing a lot of rework. Yeah, so you don't have to do things over and over again um, because you noticed them uh, at the right time and you started communicating. So let's get to the good part. Do. 
right? Uh, this is what we call it. We simplify in. I think the term simple is one of the keywords from my session today. S keeping things simple. Using standard technology, uh, which I will explain to you uh, uh, on the screen behind me, uh, we use a standard camera. You can buy this at uh, Media Market or at Amazon or whatever you want. It's a standard 360 de de degree, degree camera. Sorry. Um, what we do with this camera, we place it on our hard hat, as you see in the little video, or you take it on a selfie stick, as long as you are able to use this camera. Uh, the, the other thing that you need uh, is uh, um, a smartphone, so an iPhone or an Android phone, uh, with the Open Space app, obviously, and then you need uh, a floor plan. So this is the first part where we start using AI. I will explain it uh, in a second. So you have the camera. You put the helmet on. You go to your Bausteller. You say, OK, I'm roughly in this area. Yeah, It, it, it doesn't come super precise. It's, I'm roughly here. I'm starting now. I'm putting the phone back in my pocket. And I'm walking around uh, as the guy that you see on the video, your Bausteller. Yeah? And the trick is, and uh, we will show this a little bit later in the, in the presentation, our AI starts to understand where you started, how you have walked your job site. Uh, and then, of course, when you're done, you press stop. And it starts processing the images, like you see uh, on the screen, a little bit like Google Street View. Like if you ever have used Google Street View, yeah, you, you just stand. Uh, in the image, and uh, you can look around your street. Basically, that's what we're creating for you. Only we're doing this with your, uh, with your construction projects, right? Uh, whether you're on, the, on, your, on your mobile device or behind your computer with a very big screen, this is what you get, and this is how you see it. And I already mentioned to you before um, that we use uh, AI to plot the photos uh, on, uh, on the floor plan. So when you walk around with the camera, which is actually a video camera, um, every half a second, so twice a minute, it creates this 360 image. And if you would zoom in uh, to this image, actually you see it here. Those are all little small green dots. Those are all the 360 images that you can see on the screen. And uh, you can walk around it. And uh, it was a little bit too early for me to start uh, using um, a new feature that we have. Now you see the blue bullets yeah, that takes you from image to image to image. Some of the highlights, we've created something new uh, that we can show you in our stand, which is a line. And you can literally follow the line, and it understands how you, how you moved across your, your project. So when you start doing this regularly, let's say once a week or you know, uh, more or less, whatever you know, works for your project, you actually start creating a time machine. As you can see on the screen, we're able to pull up the images that were created at the same, uh, roughly at the same uh, place that you walked before. So that's, that's why you don't have to worry too much. You've started walking, making a video literally here, is roughly here. And our platform picks up, you were in this area. So you can see on the screen an example of you know, how, how something was when they were putting the foundation in and the rebar, and then they started walking every week, every week, every week. And you can pull up those images as a time machine. And we're calling it a time machine, but also um, people tell us that they're using open space to reduce the risks or at least manage the risks of their projects, right? If you can prove that something you did or something you didn't do, because sometimes things are broken and you don't know how that happened, you go back in time. Or you want to understand something that's below the floor or behind the wall. You can just go back in time rather than breaking it up and looking at it that way. Also, when you start creating these images, this is a little sidestep. Uh, the colleagues from marketing, communication, but also uh, some of the project managers and project directors um, started using uh, a little feature here that we call time lapse. So every time you create these images, uh, our system is able to stitch them together and make something very understandable for your clients, your customers, or even some people use it in their newsletter for their internal organization to demonstrate how the, how the project is processing and how things are going. Okay, 
So uh, as I told you in the beginning, we use a little bit of um, artificial intelligence to determine always every image that is created has a time and a location with it. So every 360 image has a time and location with it. So you can always go back in time and check at that same location if there are images available roughly in that same spot. And the roughly is the, um, decided by the colors. How darker the color, how more we're able to uh, determine you were exactly at this spot. If it gets a little bit lighter, I was roughly there, but I can still make those images so you can compare them to each other. Okay? Um, here is a little movie. I'm going to split the screen for you, as I explained, because we have more images. And we're going to see in this example, for example, what's behind the wall. So this is an example of an apartment. I'm clicking on the split screen. I'm going to look for some images at the same location back in time. So determine if something was done in the right way or something wasn't done in the right way. Either way, you know, uh, <laughs> one way you know and the other way you know you have to, have to do something about it. Of course, we are here at the Construction Summit, and a lot of people are front-runners uh, using technology and digitalization. We are also able to use ABIMetal. It's not mandatory, but if you use, if your company or your project has a BIM model available, similar to comparing the images with the images, you are now able to compare the photos, the 360 photos, the images, with your BIM model. Uh, if you want to have a play, have a look around, uh, come, come see us. But this also means you can go around. And uh, the BIM model will follow you when you walk through the images. And you can, uh, you can check if how you designed something or how somebody has designed something is built in the correct way. And you can make some decisions based on that or steer or you know, at least have a conversation about something that needs to be done. Yes, you can also walk outside of a building because it's a camera <laughs> and you are you know, making the images yourself. You can walk out of the building um, and also then start creating it with the outside of the BIM model, for example. Um, we're starting to get a little bit more traction now with uh, infrastructure or the outside world as well. Not everybody is building a building, right? We're building whatever, harbors, ports, airports, uh, we have a great example at the moment, a uh, local airport uh, in Amsterdam, where a customer had to change the lighting in a tunnel that went under the runway. So they started um, using the camera every single day to track the process, where there were robots drilling holes for the new lighting every single day. They were checking the process against the BIM model, and they were able to check if the, pro if the project was still running on time. That's just another example of uh, working with the technology in a different industry. Uh, and it was said before, we have introduced at the beginning of the year some really cool new features, particularly based around bringing BIM to the field, having less, let's say, less uh, BIM um, uh, people that work less with BIM normally in their day job, giving them an opportunity to use the BIM information, the BIM model as a reference. And in this case, you can see super easy. On the right side, you see the model. You see the digital version of what you're building. And you're able to uh, select an object, whatever you want, and place it in reality. We call this overlay. Yeah, uh, I don't know the German word, but we'll tell you uh, when you come visit us. So you select an object, yeah, take it to the real world and see if it fits, if it's supposed to be there, if it's in the right place, and you can decide if you want to, you know, if you need to make some decisions around this. Uh, this is something that was highly requested uh, because a lot of times people say, uh, on top of having a, or next to having a BIM model, we also work with point clouds. Yeah, we have point cloud information uh, around our project. So, really clever people at our company decided that why not bring that point cloud into our platform as well. And maybe later on, uh, when we move forward, there's some other things as well. Uh, we can probably talk about that next year is bringing in the point cloud gives you a lot of real insights, even more details 
on top of uh, the photos and the BIM model that you've created, right? You can start measuring, you can start creating a lot of extra value, bringing that into your platform as well. Um, I, I wanted to avoid the word digital twin, but this is kind of how we are bringing our visual twin, as we call open space. We're creating a visual representation of the real world towards digital. And uh, of course, here in the Construction Summit, you're hearing a lot about digital twins. And this is kind of how we start connecting it uh, um, to each other. Um, on a smaller scale, uh, with the newer uh, Apple devices, I'm not sure if you've checked the back of your iPhone, uh, particularly the newer ones, um, you see a little, little, little circle there. That's actually a LiDAR scanner. So we're now able to use the standard technology in the iPhone, the little LiDAR scanner that's already sitting in your phone, and scanning some, let's say, smaller objects. Don't, don't go scan your whole project or even a whole room uh, with your iPhone for this purpose. But if you want to have, like in this case, uh, a technical installation or, or a special detail that you, that you want to capture and then start measuring on a little bit later as well, uh, you can do it like this. OK? OK. So when we created this platform and we started to looking at these images, people were like, uh, this is already super cool, but how do we even start communicating on this platform with others, right? Do I still have to send the whole 360 to somebody else, or how do I do it? And now I get rid of making 200 photos and, and making you know, uh, notes towards this, but how do I communicate? This is how we started working with four ort notizen in English field notes, where we literally take a, a little sticky note. Yeah, we stick the sticky note literally on the photo behind your computer when you see that something, let's say, is wrong or needs to be fixed, right? So every time you stick a little four ort notiz on the photo, it opens, you know, uh, a different, uh, let's say, tab for you where you can even go into the photo and make some more uh, comments and, and, and suggestions. And you can appoint it to somebody. You can say, hey, this is wrong. Can you fix it for me? Uh, it needs to be fixed by a certain day. Uh, there are tags, so you can you know, say, this is health and safety, or this is uh, mechanical equipment, this is fire. Whatever you can think of, uh, you can create uh, one of these uh, four ord notizen. Uh, which you can do on your phone as well. If you walk around uh, with the camera on your head even, you can take your phone out and it's like, okay, that's a safety hazard. You click with your app, make a high-res photo with your, with your phone, and it, it ends up on the left side, you, you can see an example, it ends up in the platform in the same way, okay? So there's multiple ways of tracking issues on site whilst you're there or later uh, in the platform. And there, there's a lot of cool stuff around it. It knows where you are. It knows what direction you're looking at, et cetera, et cetera. Um, of course, uh, we are not a closed platform. We like to collaborate. We like to be open. We like to work with others. So when we started working with these uh, field nodes, uh, one thing you can do standard is take a selection of your field notes, say, I want to know everything uh, around you know, health and safety on this project in the past three months. It will generate a PDF report that you can send, uh, an interactive PDF, PDF report that you can send to whomever, uh, because like everybody can uh, read a PDF uh, report, and you can see literally uh, what the issue is, and uh, if you want to go to our platform, there's a link, you can go there. Uh, we've also created this BCF export, because a lot of people uh, who work with digital information uh, like to work uh, in another platform around issues, right? And how do you communicate around issues? Very often, uh, you do this with BCF. But also, um, we work with some of the you know, market leaders out there. In this case, an example uh, of Autodesk, where they have their uh, BIM 360 or their uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud, ACC platform, where, you know, at the very beginning, when you open a project in, in your dashboard in ACC, you can already see a preview of our 360 images. Uh, it's not only stops there, but if you remember that uh, when I created one of those field nodes, now at the top you see a little A 
from the ACC or a B from BIM 360 and some others where you can actually take the information from the open space platform and send it directly to the platform, your project management platform that you're already working with. So an issue, uh, a field note in open space, take it directly to either BIM 360 or to the ACC uh, for f further you know, um, uh, processing and handling. If you want, you don't have to, but if you work with another platform, uh, here's another example of Procore um, that are doing this very big in America, uh, but also with Revisto. So Revisto is a, how do you call this, a collaboration tool. They, they handle uh, issues. They are uh, probably familiar to you as well. You take an issue or a BCF and later on natively take it from our platform for further processing in you know, uh, 100% issue management system. Um, so far, this is what we have in our standard platform, but I wanted to show you a little bit on what we have on top of what I just explained to you. So this is called Open Space Capture. Yeah, that, that's what I showed you so far. Uh, but also, um, we've been working on something that taking all the information that you already have right now and doing something even more clever with it. Uh, that's called open space track, okay? And what we've done, uh, we also used the power of the cloud and artificial intelligence, but we're still, and I want to emphasize this to make it simple, that's what I said at the beginning, uh, we used still this, the same standard camera and the same platform. So you do nothing else, you still do this walk, that you do all the time. We just switch on a different module for you. So there's nothing extra you do. We take the images that you already have, but we have taught the system, the camera, to look as a human being, yeah? That means our camera, our platform is now able to recognize materials and amounts. So you walk around your, your construction site, you've done everything I've, I've showed you uh, in, in the past 20 minutes. But on top of that, we've taught the system to recognize materials. And you see an example of how our platform is looking at your project. That's a ceiling. That's a concrete ceiling. That's a wall. That's a finished wall. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a wall that has plaster on it, or gips, whatever it's called. Yeah, so it will tell you, I will show you uh, in, in, the, in the animation running behind me, it will show you on the floor plan, yeah, on the right side, you see the materials, they all have a different color. It will tell you on your project, hey, I've detected these materials, yeah? I can show you, because in the green again, that's how you walked your project. I detected these materials, and by the way, there are so many, yeah? I've detected 200 concrete walls, but your project says you have to do 300, so, you can decide if you're on time, if you're good on delivering your project or not. There's a little button there that also shows, show me what you've not detected, because you know um, how many items there need to be and what they are. And uh, the team at Open Space currently is working on uh, advancing this. Uh, we can tell you a little bit about that. But when you want to check uh, what the actual, what the system has detected, with your own eyes, you just literally click on one of the green bullets and say, hey, there's supposed to be five walls there. I believe you, <laughs> but I want to see it. And that's what you see behind you, okay? Uh, so with that, uh, I wanted to conclude with the slide that I showed you at the very beginning, using very simple standard uh, devices and, and a very clever but simple to use platform. Our customers are able to document faster, so you don't have to go out there, make loads of photos that go everywhere and you lose track. You don't have to go to site all the time. Of course, it's good to visit and speak with your colleagues and keep in touch. I don't want to suggest you're not doing this, but you know, you don't have to go everywhere and you can invite whomever you like to uh, have a look at your project, including your client, uh, but also for reducing and managing risk. As I said before, with the famous German example, um, you know, if there's an issue, you can detect it now. And you can share it, and somebody can take action. So, my only question left for you, before you can ask me anything, is 
you know, when will you start to create a visual time machine of your construction project? Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for introducing us open space and um, I think we have time for just one question at sure, this moment. Yeah, sure. And one of the questions we had on Slido is um, what cameras can I use to capture? Yes, so again, those are standard cameras that you can buy at the media market or Amazon or even go to your IT department and say, I need a, a standard 360 degree camera. Uh, we have them from Ricoh, we have them from Insta360. There are some others out there. Uh, there's a list of cameras that we support on our website. So uh, there's about 10 or so that you can pick from. Thank you so oh, much. Also yeah. ganz mit einfachen Mitteln kann man das machen. Ich switche ins Deutsche, sag yeah, an der yeah, Stelle yeah, good, good. erstmal, um, 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 where, where we can find you to ask more questions. Yeah, so we are uh, just opposite the entrance of the, of the main uh, speaker hall, uh, just uh, at the very back. Also einfach da yeah, vorne. Just, just go there and uh, at the far right of the path you will, you will find us. Thank you so yeah. much Thanks at this moment for your introduce, uh, introduction and um, yeah, thank you. Okay.